Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for over 10 years. In this video, we're going to consider an interesting topic. How you can save 30 to 50% on the construction of a fish farm without any losses. Fascinating, isn't it? I guess it sounds intriguing. If you are already thinking about building your own fish farm, considering possible options, and maybe you have already decided that you are going to implement this project, I recommend that you watch this video to the end, because you may see not only what you already know, but new and interesting facts and tips that will allow you to look at this business from a different perspective, and not only to get unnecessary losses, but to save on capital investment. I personally encountered a lot of cases when people were able to save money when they understood the point on time and saved competently. On the other hand, others chasing savings got into losses when their RAS equipment was not operating properly and their business in general was not organized efficiently. And as a result, instead of saving, they lost huge amounts of money. So, in order to avoid the mistakes of the second category, I recommend you to save wisely. Watch my videos. I hope you will find them interesting and useful. Here we go. The first tip on how to save money. Well, it's probably obvious, but still not everyone understands it. Get knowledgeable of what you are going to do. If you want to build your own fish farm, don't trust anyone else. Figure it out for yourself, form your own opinion. Ask the right questions, talk to different people and experts. You can save thousands, if not hundreds of thousands US dollars. I think it's right to understand the issue clearly and deeply, which is the basis, the foundation, and everything else is derived from that. The second tip – you don't need extra square meters of area. Imagine you want to set up a fish farm. There is a possibility to do everything as compactly as possible, and there is an opportunity to do it other way, on a grand scale, so that it would be simple in maintenance, look beautiful and attractive, so that even the governor could visit it. It's all great, of course, but it could cost 30-40% more, as it implies more area. And what does it mean for you? Each square meter of turnkey construction area, including utility lines, costs around 350 US dollars in my country. You multiply 350 US dollars by, let's say, 500 square meters, and you get the amount of 175,000 US dollars. That's partially the money you'll throw away if you don't install your equipment more compactly. Well, 175,000 or even 200,000 US dollars. It's not a little. Next, the third tip. The question whether you need the equipment manufactured by the world-known producers. Now I'll share with you my personal experience, which is relevant to my country only. But you will see the general idea. Once upon a time, before 2015, when the euro rate doubled, and at the time we had very few quality equipment manufacturers in Russia, I was convinced that RAS equipment import from Europe was the best option. At the time, I imported everything, so to say, to the last boat from Germany. But now, when the dollar and euro exchange rates are very high in Russia and all over the CIS countries, and at the same time there are really high quality equipment manufacturers in the country, I believe that, in many cases, ordering equipment from Europe results in a pain, which are the costs that could be avoided. Well, let's take an oxygenator, for example. It's an oxygen cone, and it's rather a simple unit. Why import it from Europe, when you can get it from local producers two or three times cheaper and still get exactly the same quality? But quality is the key word, mind that. When it comes to importing the equipment from the world-renowned manufacturers, choose wisely. Yes, there are cases when extremely technological equipment units are needed, but it absolutely doesn't mean that you need to order everything up to the last build at an elevated price. The next life hack. Weld the fish holding tanks yourself. I am probably not revealing some secret information. I can give you the figures. About 50% of the cost of the tanks is material, and the other 50% is labor cost. So you can save up to 30-40% of the tank cost if you weld it yourself. Just buy an extruder, hire some local guys whose working hours are much cheaper, or learn how to do it yourself. You don't have to order these tanky solutions. That way you can save money. And in the same way, you can buy the pipes and fittings yourself. That is, you are not obliged to buy them on a turnkey basis either. You can buy them yourself, in accordance with the specifications that your RAS equipment suppliers provide you. However, if you start trying to assemble the piping yourself, 
it's possible that you'll waste money and efforts. Because one pipe won't fit here, another one won't fit there, or a pipe diameter was wrong, and so on and so forth. I still recommend that you take the project planning completely accurately, unless you know the subject in depth. If you are not an expert, just ask the supplier for the specification and only then buy them yourself. The next life hack – construct a frameless hanger. What is it? You've probably seen a lot of such vegetable storage facilities, grain storages. In other words, this is an iron arch inside which some agricultural products are stored. So, if you apply this technology to fish, only not too vast areas, as it works well for the area of about 1,000 square meters or less. Anything more than that is not applicable, because such a hanger is very limited in width. If it's too wide, the arch will be too high, and you will suffer from excessive heating costs. Therefore, if you are planning a farm of up to 1,000 square meters and you need to save money, you should definitely opt for a frameless hanger or Nisset Hard technology. Inside, it's insulated with rolled insulation materials, like polyethylene foam. This is a wonderful technology. In my country, it's considered inferior to sandwich panels, but on the other hand, it costs two times less. And the next opportunity to save money is a tender, that is, if you order the design from the company or design it yourself, for example, and then you initiate the tender for equipment. As a rule, having the exact and verified specification of the equipment at hand will make it easier to be better oriented than if you had no specification at all and you had to consider multiple specifications from each and every supplier. It won't be clear for you how to compare them, how to figure out which of them is more expensive and which one offers lower price. If you have one standardized specification, it's always more convenient to proceed. Well, and the next tip is to install the equipment on your own. You don't have to order a turnkey installation from some company. Of course, you can do that. On average, it will cost you about 20% of the total cost of the equipment. And I underline that it's an average installation cost. But you can also do it yourself. I will show you in a separate video that you don't need to do anything supernatural to install rest equipment. You can order installation supervision from the designer or the supplier, and thus you can save a lot of money. Take a sensible approach to utility lines installation. Be sure to watch my videos dedicated to each utility line separately, as all of them are rather costly. Many starting farmers make the mistake of presuming that if they erected a building, connected it to water supply, installed lighting, and that's it. No, you need to approach that very thoughtfully and thoroughly. Water supply, heating, ventilation, drainage – it's not that simple. So watch my videos, figure out how to do it optimally, and thus you won't overspend and will still provide for the minimum you need. You can assemble a hodgepodge of a different equipment. Even if you work with one supplier, you can agree that some items that are inferior in price or technical characteristics could be replaced with other similar equipment. That way you can simply save money on the project. This is quite obvious, but not everyone takes the advantage of it. Well, and probably the tenth and the last tip. Order us equipment from the direct manufacturer, not from the so-called middleman. If you opt for the designers who don't manufacture the equipment themselves, it means that they are dealers and resell it. And then you are unlikely to get such good and loyal terms from them that you expect. So keep this in mind as well. And now I will tell you about three very important things that you should never skimp on. I recommend that you memorize them and apply in case you are going to build your own farm. The first is, if you want to construct an industrial-scale farm, if it's not a mini res farm project, by no means use any Chinese pumps, sand filters and cheap and low-quality equipment in general. You can do that when you're setting up a small, conventionally household farm. You just want to experiment. And then that's fine, you can do that, why not? But if you want to run a serious business, a run half thousands and maybe even hundreds of thousands of US dollars growing in your fish holding tanks, then I recommend you to completely forget about ordering conventionally homemade equipment. Because it's completely unreliable and efficient for your business. And if you choose ordering some rubber basins that the sturgeon will simply break through just by speeding up as its average grow-out weight is 2 kilograms. Well, anyway, I've seen a huge number of cases when farmers suffered great losses in this case. So it's up to you, but that's my recommendation. If you want an industrial farm, use reliable industrial equipment. 
Second, what you should not economize on is providing for standby units and safety. I recommend you to provide for the following standby units. First, pumps, because if pump fails, the fish will get no oxygen, and it will just die within an hour. So make sure you duplicate the pumps, reserve oxygen, because if oxygen is not supplied to the system, the same misfortune will happen. Back up the electricity. So keep in mind at least those three things. Set notifications by sensors in something goes wrong in the system. For example, if water level drops dramatically as water was accidentally drained or something has stopped somewhere, you will get immediate notification to your mobile. Let me reiterate, never skimp on standby units. Make sure you have a backup generator with an automatic start, because if there is a power outage, it will start up immediately. And these precautions will give you a stable result, because otherwise, don't forget about Murphy's Law. If something can go wrong, it's bound to go wrong. The last thing I don't recommend you to save money on is if you hear about a proprietary or unique technology. And this solution or facility is twice as powerful, twice as cheap. Well, I could say, run away immediately and as far as possible. But I will refrain from that. However, as an expert with more than 10 years of experience in this field, I insist that you think it over 100 times. The fact is that Rust technology has not changed globally for over 30 years. There are some minor improvements and upgrades, but there are no fundamentally new solutions in this area. However, there are certain individuals who offer patented proprietary technology which is two times cheaper and can give you really two times more fish. In practice, I have encountered a huge number of misfortunate cases when people have been very badly burned by such, let's say, cooperated technologies. And also, unfortunately, I have not seen any positive outcomes. Well, this last comment is mostly applied to those countries where Rust technology is not that developed at present as in Europe and the USA. But I am convinced that most of you will have your own and more precise analogies that could be referred to your countries. However, it's up to you to decide. So, today I've told you about 10 life hacks how to save money and 3 critical mistakes you shouldn't save money on. I hope you found it useful and that it will help you to implement your fish farming project successfully. It's Anton Belcher and my channel on how to grow fish and make good money from it. Bye!